This is what I ended up getting. It's a, called a Top Scan, made by Top Don. This is a Bluetooth dongle, but it's not like these. Remember these, the old ELM 386? Not like one of those. It does a whole lot more. Let's check it out. Now this thing is still in beta test, so you can't buy it yet, but it's coming soon. Should be available late this spring. This is what comes in the box, and there's some instructions on it. Let me go plug this into the car. I've paired this with my tablet. Now, Top Don recommends that you don't use a tablet, but I think the reason why is because phones are so much better than tablets as far as computing power. But this is a pretty good one. So I haven't had any problems with it just yet. All right, did you hear that? Now, as soon as I plugged the dongle into my OBD port, it gave it power. And as soon as the app started, it paired with the app automatically. So now I'm ready to go to scan this vehicle. And yep, we've got the right VIN and everything. So let's go ahead and go to diagnostics. I'm just gonna go into engine. We'll see if we have any DTCs there. Okay, good, no DTCs. I don't have a check engine light, but one thing that I do have is airbag. So let's go to the airbag module. Okay, and this is in beta test, so it's a little bit buggy. Every once in a while, a button won't work or you have to just give it some time for lag. They're still working on it. It gets better all the time, but once this is available to the public, all of these bugs should be worked out. And I like to think that I'm a part of that to help them out so I can just report anything that's a problem and they can fix that before it goes to market. All right, so we can go to trouble codes on the airbag. All right, we've got a B1826. So we've got an open in the side squid, that left-hand circuit. We can search that code and it comes up with Google results on here. We can check the B1826 on Google. We can go down and see what causes it. And it's gonna be a malfunction in the circuit for the left-hand side side airbag on the driver's seat here. So that's gonna be a connector that's underneath the seat I can't zoom in, but it's gonna be right there underneath the seat. We can pull the seat out and have a look at that. But this is a 2006, it's a little bit old. Let's go out to a 2018 and see what we can do on that car. All right, we're in the wife's car now. It's a 2018 Toyota Tundra, so it's still a Toyota. Get the key in here and we'll pop the dongle down here into the port. All right, she's plugged in now. All right, I'm gonna turn the key on. And then we're gonna choose Toyota. Let's do an automatic VIN detect and we'll tap read. So hopefully it'll be able to find the VIN and I won't have to search it. Okay, it found it. So we've got radar crews Got a 2018 Tundra, 3 URFE. There's the VIN, so it was able to read that. That's cool, let's go to diagnosis. And there's a lot of them. All these modules are what this has. Four wheel drive, ABS, uh, TPMS, front camera, all sorts of stuff. All these modules, you can read live data, you can read codes from there, and on some of them you can do special functions. So we're going into engine right now. We've got trouble codes. There should not be any. There's, yeah, there's no, and look how fast that was. That was lightning fast, much faster than the 06, uh, just because the newer computers in this car are faster. So uh, we've got live data, special functions, and active tests. So let's see how many active tests. This is your bi-directional control. And there's a long list. Okay, fuel pump. Solenoid S1, bunch of solenoids here. VVT, oh, it's got activate the lockup. That's probably the torque converter. More V, lots of VVT stuff. Starter relay, I wonder if that would actually start the engine. Ignition on, engine off. All right, let's try it. Uh, sure, we'll go with data. Do not start the engine frequently during this test. Okay. 
activate the engine starter relay. The current value is off. Let's go on. That is fantastic. I like that. That is really, really cool. So if you are, if you're not sure whether the ignition is at fault, like at the key, or there's some other wiring problem, what if your ignition key weren't working, or maybe it's the starter and you didn't know? Well, you could bypass the ignition key by going here and starting it to see if the starter works. If it does, your ignition key could be at fault. And if it doesn't, well, you can go right to the starter. That's just really cool. Let me turn it off, see if it turns off the engine. Okay, that doesn't shut off the engine, but that's still super cool. All right, let me turn off the engine with the key. And turn the key back on so we can do some stuff. Okay, we'll do one more thing. I'm gonna do a fuel pump test. I think I fit, yeah, it's down here at the bottom. And it'll give us live data while we're doing it, if you choose data. Now I can activate the fuel pump. I'm going to be quiet so you can hear it. Hold on. Be real quiet. I don't know if you can hear that. I could hear it. Probably doesn't come up on camera, but that's cool. It activated the fuel pump, so that's neat. Let's go out of the engine and let's go to... Let's try air conditioner. Let's see if we can make the AC click. Oh, yeah, let's see if we can activate it. Air mix servo, target pulse, outlet servo, damper. Let's try the damper. We'll do it with data. Add. Ah, you hear that? It moved the door inside uh, inside the HVAC box. Let's go back the other way. So I hope that helps you understand how useful this can be while you're diagnosing something. You can shut off or turn on a module or a motor somewhere in the vehicle that you're suspecting could be bad. So if you did that and you didn't hear the motor work, you could put a voltmeter or a test light into that connector to see if it lights up. If you're getting voltage there at the motor and the motor doesn't spin, well, you know you need a, a new motor. And this is going to help you do that because you can activate like the fuel pump or like this motor here or any other, anything else that you're working on. If you've got a tool like this that can help you test these components and you can accurately pinpoint where the problem is, you're not going to be wasting your time or your money. You're going to get the job done right the first time, and you're going to have a lot more confidence in your diagnostics because this tool is so powerful. I'm excited that I got the opportunity to beta test this because this is going to be a good value for you at home if you're a DIYer or a professional. This is a small tool. It'll go into your toolbox, not take up a lot of room, but the best part is it's coming in at about $150, probably less than that, as soon as it comes out later this year. But stay tuned because as soon as it's available, I'll release a full review video on this tool. I'll have better information on the exact pricing for all of the downloads. You can check that out. Click right over there. If it is available now, it'll show up here on the screen. If not, check back in the video description or subscribe to the channel to look for that in the future. It's super exciting. I can't wait to show you. So until then, keep on wrenching. Peace.